Tree Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. The pattern that we're working on today, the basket, is the pottery basket. The material pattern that you'll need for this basket is as follows. You'll need a clay or a ceramic base with an odd number of holes drilled at the top, number five round reed, and the option of weavers is up to you. I have here a base, and this is my pottery base. I have my holes drilled, of course, before it was fired. They're about a half inch from the edge and about a half inch apart. And make sure you have an odd number, that's important. I've already cut my material. A good length to use is a 48 inch length. That gives you a lot of room for your braid and for your weaving and your top Gretchen braid. We're simply going to insert these in the holes at the base. I'm going to come in here and measure out about five inches is a good length for this braid. The other ones we can kind of measure to it. I'm going to insert these all around. They're going to slide on you, so we'll get about half of them in and then we'll start our braid up the side. It's a lot to handle. They're long lengths. Just kind of keep them together. They like to tangle. Let me insert just a couple more and then we'll start the braid. That'll help keep it all together while you're working too. Okay, again I'm going to come in here and measure out my five inches. Measure my other ones to my first ones. I'm going to come under two and to the outside. Down behind two to the outside. Work this pattern all the way around. Adjust your lengths. I see some of them are long and short. Under two to the outside. You should soak this reed because it's number five. It's a little heavier. It needs to soak for about 15 minutes to make it more pliable. The heavier the reed, the longer it needs to soak. Okay, I'm going to stop there and give it a turn. And put these out of my way. And I'll start inserting some more here. Under two. You're going to have to kind of hold it with your left hand if you're right handed. And weave it around. For this particular base here, I have 41 holes drilled in it. So I had to cut 41 lengths, 48 inches long. And then you need to keep in mind also how tall you want to do your weaving and take that into accommodation when you're cutting your lengths. I'm going to check my length. It looks like I'm getting a little bit short here. I am. I'm only at four, so I'm going to come back and pull these a little bit longer. Otherwise, I won't have enough length to finish that last part of the braid. I know this is a lot to hang on to, but you won't be under any pressure to hurry, so take your time, do a good job. Come back here and go behind two and up. You'll be able to find these bases at your local craft stores, and later we'll talk about how you can even make your own if you do ceramics. it around. 
Make sure you don't pick up one of the ends from the ones I've already put in here. Almost there. I'm going to give it a turn and bring my tails around here. Let them hang over the edge of my table so they'll get out of my way. This is just a simple, basic two-step braid. Most of your two-step braids will go under one and out, but this particular one I've chose to do under two and out, and I think I need to lengthen them a little more. Make sure they don't get too short on you. When you weave your baskets, try to think of different things you can put in them to weave, use for weavers. You can go outside and get yourself a nice branch from the tree, watch the shape of it. You could even weave using that for a base. Let your imaginations go. Two more. There we go. Behind two and out. Behind two and out. This one's a little short. Behind two and up. Now, in order to finish this, I'm going to, this is the very first one I put in. I'm going to pull it out and bring this one up. This is the second one I put in because I'm going behind two and bring that one up. Then take your thumbs and go around and push them all back in. Now the second part of this braid is to go behind one. So the first part is to go under two and up. Second part is to go behind one and down. If they seem to be breaking on you, come in here and put a crimp on them. And then they won't be so apt to break and crack right there. Sometimes I keep a spray bottle near me when I'm working, left over from some window cleaner, that works fine and you can keep spraying this. Remember, you're taking one and you're going behind one now and down. And you can finish the braid out that way. I already have one finished up to that point. Wrong one. This one's a little bit smaller base, but I still kept the 48 length so I can do a nice Gretchen braid at the end. And this is a lot to handle. You're going to start your weaving now. I have my, both of my inside braids all done. I'm going to start out with twining two different end lengths with a center crimp again. Remember that crimp helps it bend without breaking. You're going to work this way. Pull your weavers down in front of you. You're going to loop this over. Long lengths to work with on this basket. Pull these in and do some twining. I like to put in a good two rows of twining before I start working up my sides. Best thing is just pull these through. We've already been through twining. We're taking the left one, taking it around and back out, then picking up the next one, which will have become your left one. As you work, keep, you see the palm of my hand is pulling this down. And we're going to keep working this around. I'm trying to get these to arch this way, so they'll go up towards the front of the basket. you need lots of room to work on this one. Do be careful. I've slapped myself in the face with this wet reed, and it does sting. So be careful while you're working. Keep it away from your eyes. A lot to handle here. Keep working it around.
I'm knocking everything off the table trying to work this around. Different weavers that you can use once you get these first two rows in. I've used some seagrass, which I was going to use on this one here. The seagrass I've chosen is number one because it's a little bit more flexible and bends easy when you're working on this portion of it. I'm almost around once. You could also use number three, but I think I would use it higher up. Um, I've also used some jute, as you can see I've used in the basket that we showed at the opening. Uh, I've put some beads in it. I've put two different row of beads. Simply slide them down the length of your reed. When I get over here to where I've started, I'm going to pick up my seagrass and I'm going to end one of my, I'm using number four round and I'm going to end that right here. So let's cut off this length here and let's add some seagrass into this one. This is number one. Find the length, the end of it here. I'm simply going to insert it up here and now I'm going to continue to weave using my seagrass for one strand and my number four for another strand and weave this around. Let me show you some variations because you're just going to keep on weaving like this, keep on twining up the sides, bring your sides up. You need to go up so the base is probably be about 10 inches high and just continue weaving that around. In this basket, I have used my quarter inch and my jute. And this is the jute I used. You can buy this uh, packaging jute uh, at your dime store. Used to wrap packages in, that's what this is. Or you could use the jute that you use for macrame. I did about three rows of twining down here to get it to bend up. And then I started in alternating my rows with the quarter inch. When you use the quarter inch, start with a tapered end. That's important so you'll have a nice smooth beginning. Some variations I've done on this basket. This is a ceramic base. Base for you ladies that do ceramics. It's simply a ceramic bowl. While it's still in the greenware state, I have drilled holes in it. And, but make sure the hole is large because I assume that there's some shrinkage in there. So make sure the hole's larger than what you need for the reed. And do the very same braid on the inside. Here I've done some finger weaving and inserted my yarn in here. And again, I use the quarter inch to go up this one. This is a little bit smaller base, made the same way as a ceramic base. I've done the braid on the outside, just as a variation. Again, I've started inside and I've put some, can you see this in here? I've put some number two round to start my base here. Then I've gone up with three sixteenths, added some beads and yarn in this. A little bit different braid on the top. Lots of different ideas you can do with these baskets. We'll go ahead and we'll get up to our Gretchen braid because that's going to take us some time. I've saved about 30 inches for the top of my Gretchen braid so I can have a nice one going down the sides. And I've also broken a spoke, so let me show you how to repair this. Now this has been soaking, it's very wet. You don't need to get your jute this wet. I'm going to come in here and take a piece of number five take my knitting needle or my screwdriver. This is the piece that broke here. I'm going to insert my knitting needle or screwdriver down in here a ways, open this up, come back in with my new piece of five and stick it down in there, work it down for a ways, draw it up, let me unhook these up here. draw it up to match its neighbor because we want to be sure and have this length up here and simply cut it off. Then we can come back in here and right at the top here cut the old one off. And you can discard that. Then I've taken my needle nose pliers and I've gone around each one of these and put a big crimp on them. A good heavy crimp all the way around. That's so it again will bend and won't break on me. To start this braid, you're going to pick up two pieces, starting anywhere, take two, 
take the one to the left and bring it forward. Bring down the next one. Come over here, I have three in my hand, and take that one down. Bring over this one. I again have three in my hand. Take the left one and take it over. Repeat this step all the way around. I have three in my hand and I'm working it around. Always taking the left, working left to right. If you're left-handed, you could reverse this pattern. I think you'll find most patterns can be reversed. This is a very simple braid, but it's a beautiful braid. I like it because it seems to wrap around the basket. Always having three in my hand till I take that one over. I know this is a long length. If you notice, I'm holding it with my fingers. I'm holding this back part down. Got three in my hand, and this one goes over. Almost around. They're going to tangle, so take a minute and straighten them out. Three in your hand, and one over. I don't know as though I'd stain this basket, seeing it has all this jute in it or sea grass or whatever you decide to put in it. And I think that the base would probably absorb some of the stain too, seeing that there's no glaze on this pottery base. When you get back to where you started, you're going to end up with two in your hand. Bring the farthest one over, and this is the first one that we started with here. It's going to slide under there and pull it forward. This is the last one. You'll have an empty spot here on the second one that you started with. Come from behind and pull that one through. And I always give it a turn. Now this time I'm going to mark it with a clothespin because it gets a little more. It's the same basic weave. It's just getting a little harder to follow because we're building up rows. Picking up three in your hand, starting anywhere. I want you to put a clothespin back here where you're starting on your, your far left piece. Taking the one on the left, you're going to go over two and down and hold it down with the, palm, with the back of your hand. Pick up a third and go behind. Always going behind. Giving the basket a turn. My basket looks a little bit misshaped, but that's because it's so wet. I'll shape it up when I get finished, then let it dry. Working behind. Give it a turn. Picking up this one on the right, going over two and down. Over two and down and holding it with the back of my hand. We straighten out these ends because they get tangled. And give it a turn. Always have three in my hand. Bring up that third one. This is a real old braid. I'm not sure where it originated, but I know it's been around a long time. And behind. And give it another turn. Picking up that third one and going behind. I'm almost back to where I started. And this is where you need to pay attention and where to put those last two in. See why I mark it? It would be so easy for me to keep right on going and pick up this one way over here and keep right on going. That's why it's good to put that clothespin there. Taking this one here, I only have two left. This is the one I started my braid with. Pull it out a little bit, insert this down, grab it under here and pull it through. This is the second one I started my braid with. I'm going behind this one here. I'm going to slide. There's another one that comes out here. That piece goes right down in there. So really the second one's going over too. And see how that forms that braid right in there and keeps it going. Okay. Again, when you start your next row, 
starting anywhere, but give it a turn. Be sure and put that clothespin on so you'll know where you start and start the braid. Picking up three and go behind. Go behind. Always picking up that third one so you're ending up with three in your hand. Can you see how the braid is starting to wrap down the sides, the outside of the basket? I'm going to speed this up so I can get another row done for you. This really goes kind of fast. Once you get the hang of it, you can move right along and do it. Let me get another row done. You'll be able to see more how that's wrapping down the, the front of this basket. You could also use a pottery base that had a finish on it. It certainly would work and be pretty. I think the bigger basket that we showed you on the front would be really pretty with, oh, a big fig tree in it or some kind of a large plant. Certainly has the country appeal to it. Okay, I'm back to where I started. Untangle these. Take my pin off. I'm going to come up here. This is the first one here. That was my first one on this row. And I'm going to insert my farthest one on the left down through that hole and pull it. Then I can come over here and tighten it back down. This is the second one I did. I'm going to open that up and go in between there. Remember there's a, there's a piece coming here. There's a piece coming from back. You're going to go right down in there between them. Okay, I'd like to do one more row. I still don't have quite the effect that I want to give you with this wrapping down. You can see I have lots of length here. That's why I left a good 30 inches so that I could go ahead and do lots of rows and do as many rows as it takes. Let me put my clothespin back here. Do as many rows as it takes um, to use up the whole length. I personally think the more rows you do on a Gretchen braid, the prettier it is. We'll go ahead and do another row. This fourth row is really starting to show how pretty this is. This is a good shot, too, where you can see the, the braid on the inside of the basket. When I finish with this and I'm doing the trim work, I'll go in, on the inside there and trim off some of these lengths. Let me show you. I'll trim off some of these lengths down in here. Don't lose your braid. If you do lose and you get messed up, this is a very simple braid to simply take out. It comes out very easy, almost too easy when you come to take it out. And just start again. Taking that farther one over. I have three in my hand, pulling that farthest left one over. Here's another good angle where you can see these rows building up. I'm at the end. Put my close pin there. Come around here. I'm taking my farthest one. Let me bring this around. This is the first one I started with in this row, and I'm going down in between it. Then give this a little pull. Come back here and pull it. This is the second one I started with. And I'm going to insert it right down in here. I have this first piece coming over. I have another piece coming here. I'm going to insert it down in there, right down in there. And then just pull those all back together. Continue with this braid. Like I said, the farther, the more you do, the prettier the wraps. Then you can go back and do a lot of trim work on your basket. The basket we'll be working on in the next program is our cowbell basket. It also has some history on it, has some bells in it. This is a fun one to do. We'll look for you in our next show.
purchase a video cassette copy of this program, please send a check or money order for fourteen forty-five to Basket Weaving, WFUM TV, the University of Michigan, Flint, Flint, Michigan, four eight five zero two two one eight six. Please specify the basket featured on the program. Country basket weaving is made possible by a grant from the Home Style Shop, located in Millington, Michigan, a manufacturer and mail order company of handles and a variety of other supplies for the basket weaver. The farther, the more you do, the prettier the wraps. Then you can go back and do a lot of trim work on your basket. The basket we'll be working on in the next program is our cowbell basket. It also has some history on it, has some bells in it. This is a fun one to do. We'll look for you in our next show.